As we get ready to introduce your drivers for tonight's 90 minute spring shootout figure eight, starting from the back of the field. Fella comes out of the mothballs, it seems, every special race we have, whether it be the three hour or now the 90 minute. Coming in as a rookie in this one, but he's got a couple decades under his belt. Ladies and gentlemen, a great big speed drum. Welcome back. Mr. Johnny Bird returns to the Napa Speed Drum race in action here. Johnny Bird back in action at the speed drum. Car number 53, the purple and pink machine. Alongside him is going to be a fellow who's hoping that his bad luck days are behind him after a tough 2017. But he soldiered on through. It's going to be one of the fellows we'll be seeing in the special show about the eight. Give it up for car number 10, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Armour on board once again. And it seems like the fellow that has taken up the mantle of hard luck here in this season. It's going to be starting in the 25th position. Driving car number 11, tracing gremlins all the way. Driver car number 11, Mr. Jeff Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a fellow that I kind of grew up with out here watching race the bicycles. Then I watched him bringing his kid along. A veteran, but going to come in as a rookie in this event for his first time ever in the spring shootout. Former winner here at the Annapolis Speed Drum and a longtime racer and a good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back in car number 77, Mr. Donnie Garrigus III. Starting in the 23rd position is a fellow that comes out only for the special races. Racing Chuck Strong every time he's here, though, and he's always one tough customer, whether he's building them, fixing them, or driving them. Driving car number 22, it is the original, except no substitutes, Chris Green in the number 22, ladies and gentlemen. A family tree that has proven to have strong roots and branches here at the Indianapolis Speedrome has produced yet another one that we're going to keep an eye on when it comes time to count down championship chases. A rookie this year, but has already proven a strong contender. Driving car number 28, give it up Speedrome style for Jeffrey Shackelford, ladies and gentlemen. We got to introduce this next guy's dad just a few minutes ago, and he's the latest addition to the family tree here that is racing here at the Speed Drum going back a couple of decades. Driving car number G4 for the Sims crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a younger member of the family. This is Donnie Garrigus, the fourth in the G4 machine. Over the decades, there have been many guys who've carried the mantle of Mr. Excitement at the Indianapolis Speedrome, but one guy that has been provided a whole lot of that excitement is on board with us again, starting in the 20th position. He's uh, stopping hearts and shedding parts. It's car number 99, Tim Logue, ladies and gentlemen. When they count up some of the best rookie runs ever, here in the last few decades here at the Speedrome, they're going to point their finger at people like Mike St. John and R.J. Norton Jr., but they're going to have to definitely give a big nod to this next fellow right now in car number 87, one of the toughest rookies we've ever had. Newbie on the block, but ready to go at it. Car number 87, Mr. Matt Smith, ladies and gentlemen. The 18th position belonged to one of the coolest customers you could ever ask for. Part of a family that goes back as far back as we count the tunnies. This one, they count down south in car number 16 in the 18th position. It's going to be Jeff Harmon, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye on him. One tough customer. Bragged about the traditions coming along here. And this is going to be another one, a third generation driver here at the Speedrome and another family tree that goes way back with deep roots here on the east side of Indianapolis. Driving car number 91, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rodney's baby boy, Chad Sizemore in the 91. Hey, Tori, real quick, we need the two people that were in the orange shirts with the 50-50 tickets. Come down here and meet us. We need to put, combine all the 50-50 tickets together, yep. please. We're talking about family trees. Here's another one here, coming in as a rookie in this event. But he's a longtime veteran, starting with racing big wheels out here when his daddy was racing the figure eight. In the double zero in the 16th position, a rookie, but not a newbie. It's the double zero, Corey Turner, back in action, here where he belongs. 
You heard in the interview, that, and you heard me talking earlier, that this next driver was a fella that is not afraid to dig it in deep and dig it in hard. He knows the battles inside and out, top to bottom of the racetrack. Driving car number 17, he starts in the 15th position from down south of the border. It's Corey Harmon back with us here at the Speed Drum, ladies and gentlemen. The 14th position belongs to a fellow who has been one of the speediest cars out here without the last name of Tunney. He has been a fellow that's put together one heck of a team. It's been a joy to watch. Looking for that big win in the 3D machine. It's going to be the Bull, Steve Durham, ladies and gentlemen, starting 14th. Another one of the fellows we've seen grown up out here be starting in the 13th position. Starting off with bicycle races and then moving on up to the road runners and whatever else he could find to drive. He's got him a nice little ride right now. Looking for the big luck, especially at the crossover. Car number 42, it's Nick Moore, ladies and gentlemen. It's almost scary to think that this is the first time this guy's been in this race, was not with us last year. I haven't seen the R next to this guy's name since the year he won a figure eight as a rookie. Many, many moons ago, we've had a few presidents since then, but he's back with us again in car number 69. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you once again R.J. Norton, Jr. Position number 11 belongs to a guy that uh, basically fell in love with this place the last couple of years. We're wondering where he came from, where he's going to do, but he's proven that he can be fast, he can be tough, and he's looking for the first big win. Driving car number 80, we call him the water boy. It is Donnie Murphy once again with us here at the Speed Drome. Tenth place, after <laughs> he gets done hugging Donnie Murphy, tenth place belongs to a guy whose roots go back on the high banks up north. He's now living down in Greenwood, Indiana. I say he's got power by certified. He's certifiable himself. Car number 21 for Cobra Racing Squad. It is Mike Riddle Jr. This next driver is another one. Goes back generations here at the Speed Drum. His father was a former champion in the stock class. Went on to become Rookie of the Year in the old pro stock class. His kid then came on a few years later. Made a few marks for himself and disappeared for about 10, 15 years or so and then came back out of nowhere and said, I want to go racing again, and he came on strong. He left us. He came back. He left us again. He came back again. He's like a penny that just won't go away, but he's with us here tonight, starting position number nine, car number 20, John Connor Jr. Another fellow that I'm shocked to call a rookie in this event. I forgot he was not here with us in the last year. One fellow that keeps his head no matter what. One of the coolest heads you can ask for out on the figure eight track. Another fellow to keep an eye on when it comes time for the end of the show. And the 6-H machine starting in eight position. It's Chris Harmon, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be next to a three-time champion here in the late model division at the Indianapolis Speedrome. And part of that racing family that everybody's been following and hollering about the last couple of years. Coming in in car number 12. It's the middle kid, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jesse Tunney. Just ahead of him will be one of the veterans of this sport, one of the smartest, toughest guys who just has not been able to get the speed drum to smile upon him. Old Lady Luck just not been kind, but it could happen. We'll keep waiting for it and hoping for it. Driving the C4, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Calvin Crane. Bring us back to the top five qualifiers here tonight. Starting in the fifth position, he is your defending champion from the World Championship three-hour figure eight endurance race. He's got one of the funniest little pit crews. It's a four-legged dog back there, likes laying down with him under the car, but is ready to roll. He is one tough guy behind the eight. Ladies and gentlemen, the number four machine, Mike Hadley Jr. A lot of the folks who come back to the speed drum year after year, going back in the 1950s and 60s, you remember a fellow named Marvin St. John. Then later on, it was his son, Kenny St. John. 
Then it was his brother, Tommy St. John, wrenching for the brother, Mike St. John. Well, now Tommy's boy is out here with us, and he is the fourth quickest qualifier here on his rookie season. We all want to give a great big speed drum. Welcome home, Tommy St. John Jr., car number 29, your fourth fastest qualifier. And now it's time for that trip to Tunnytown. Starting in the third position, your defending speed drum late model champion. And the fellas hoping to make the mark here tonight. It was looking good for him to be fast time until somebody came up with a better one. Car number five, ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Ben Tunney. We came into 2018 thinking that this was the year of the Sten. It seemed like he was going to be unstoppable. He was tough. He was hard. He was fast. And he was a big winner. It still could happen. It still come together. We'll keep watching for it. He tied for fast time tonight, but couldn't take it. In car number seven, starting the outside position. Car number seven, Austin Tunney. And it seemed fitting. Last night, we almost were going to count him out. He just couldn't seem to find the speed, couldn't seem to get it together. But he comes out today, and he found it all. Ladies and gentlemen, you're defending spring shootout champion, driving the three-team machine. Give it up for Mark Tunney, the marksman, back home again. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your starting field for tonight's spring shootout. We got our bucket. We got our tickets. We're ready for a 50-50. We're still waiting on the two people in the orange shirts. We've called for them. We need the, we need the tickets, please. If we could, please. We need to clear the track, but for one person with each driver, one crewman with each driver, one crewman with each driver, please. Start clearing the track. Kiss them goodbye. Shake their hands. Touch them where it counts. Remember, fans, on lap number three, I need everybody on their feet. The film crew's here. I need everybody cheering, fist pumping, waving, getting rowdy so the nation can see just how crazy the figure eight fans are here in Indianapolis. Who wants to make some noise? Let me hear you scream. Come on now. Let me hear you scream. Who's ready for some racing? Assembling some of the bestest, the greatest, the smartest, the sharpest. And a few of them aren't quite there yet. That's all right. <laughs> We're getting ready for tonight's spring shootout. 90 minutes. Here's a couple things to keep in mind. One, this will be an open pit event. Attention in the pit area, but attention, especially if you brought your chillins, if you brought your little ankle biters, you brought your little curtain climbers, do not allow them to roam about the pit area during this event. There will be cars going in and out, coming back on the track. Do not allow people to just wander about aimlessly. Please keep the lanes clear at all times. The pits will be open. The pits will be part of the racing surface. That being said, it is within the purview of race officials to disqualify anybody racing dangerously through the pits. However, common sense says please stay out of the pit lanes. If you want a chance to be here at the end to enjoy those Jack's Donuts, please don't get run over in the pit area. Keep that in mind at all times over in the pit area. Also, you folks here in the stands, that means if your favorite gets a flat tire, just as we saw with Swinford there in that Thunder Car event, get the fix, get it fixed, and come on back out to try again. Pits will be open during this event. Cars will be allowed to come back out. This isn't a race of attrition, a race of time, a race of laps. A little FYI, the 50 50 is going to be during the race, so. We'll try to call it out as best. They're still ripping the people in the orange shirts. are still ripping tickets. We haven't okay. got a total yet. So I can just tell somebody it's going to be a big one. So, again, hang on to your 50-50 tickets. When we get a quiet red flag, we'll give a holler out. Apologize for the delay. You folks uh, kept them busy. They were swamped. They were busy out there. Speed Drone Charitable Fund has been doing a, quite a bit of work. Well, as you know, last time out, we helped out Billy Bartholomew and family there. Young lady getting a heart transplant. Heard the winner of that night. Kicking his money, his winnings right back in. 
And you folks here at the Speedrome making it possible. You folks are Speedrome family proud. We're proud here. We thank you all for being with us as we get ready for 90 minutes worth of figure eight action. Appreciate the hard work the 50-50 crews had to do here today. Please bear with us while we wait for us to draw. We'll get to a quiet moment during the event and get it shouted out. 90 minute figure eight coming up next. Again, TV people on board here. Keep in mind, if you didn't want to be seen on TV, one, the really bad time to join the witness protection program, and two, maybe pick the wrong place. We're going to have some fun here tonight, though. As you heard uh, Scott Keane telling you, lap three, lap three, be ready to stand up and give it up. Big wave. Keep an eye on the sky, too. They've been running the drones here with us here the last couple of runs. Get some great overhead shots. I hope you've been able to check them out on Facebook for some of those overhead shots. We've been getting out of the folks with the eight, working on that program, that ready to roll. You can see the uh, clock started on the Speedrome signboard. Be giving you a countdown on that. Yellow flags, red flags will not count as the clock. Um, We're down here at track side with a uh, gentleman that's going to do, help me do the most famous words of all. <laughs> Cleveland Cavaliers fan, Johnny Bishop. Special reminder, yellow flags will be bunching up on the yellow, pace car, et cetera, that sort of fun thing. Yellow flags won't be counting. Laps will be counting, so keep that in mind. Clock be ticking. We'll stop the clock, though, for red flag situations. Quick check to make sure everybody's buckled in appropriately. It's supposed to be one person per car. Looks like a few of these teams haven't got that counting thing down just quite right. One person per car, please. One person per car. Is that an Andy Shirley fan going track? Man, oh man, we got Andy Shirley fans all over this place these days. Where's that? How's that happen? Share Cropper from Sheridan's just got it rolling. Reminder in the pit area: we make sure you uh, factor front wheel drives and thunder cars. Turn your transponders in, by the way. Do not forget to turn your transponders in. The final check there. Looks like everybody's belted in. Seat belts on. Steering wheels tight. Real quick, remember, lap number three and everybody on their feet. Gentlemen, everybody is ready here with Mr. Bishop. We got the uh, call here to do the uh, gentleman thing. So on the count of three, we're going to do it. One, One two, two, three. three. Gentlemen, Gentlemen, start your engines! All right, everybody. Well, the engines have been fired. Oh, man. 90 minutes of late model outlaw figure eight racing coming up next on lowbudget.tv, www.lowbudget.tv. We are cutting the look in. If you want to see the entire race, this is your chance. in now. Cut for Nate, and we'll see you on website. Eight months ago, I came to this track for the first time. I looked at how small the course was, I looked at the quality of the cars, and I was blown away. And you're back, and there's a reason for that, Tommy. The Indianapolis Speedrome, what they have going on here is one of a kind. And these drivers and crews that put their hearts and souls into getting these fast Brutally fast machines on this racetrack. 
All the respect. What you're about to see these drivers do, if you've never seen a figure eight race before, you'll see why these drivers deserve your respect. Jeffrey, what did Chad Sizemore tell you before he's trapped in? Chad Sizemore, he gave me a quote, but he said he would only give me the quote if I quoted him. But this is what he said the world ought to know. In oval racing, it's like playing with one ball. In figure eights, you need a set. <laughs> oh boy, well, that is coming straight from the driver's mouth. Jeffrey, it's time to do some 90 minute figure eight racing on the pole in this one. Will be Austin Tunney. Those outside the 3T of Mark Tunney, row two, Ben Tunney, outside Tommy St. John's. Row three, the number four, the world champion of 2017 in figure eight racing, Michael Hadley. C4, Calvin Crane, the 12 of Jesse Tunney. Then the number six, Machine of Chris Harmon. The number 20 of John Connor Jr., the 21 of Mike Riddle. The number 80 of Donnie Murphy, the second. RJ Norton Jr. goes outside of the number 69. 42, Nick Moore, the 3D of the Bull, Steve Durham. Corey Harmon in the 17, the double zero of Corey Turner. Jeff Harmon, fast in the three hour race. Gonna have to make its work cut out for him. And this one, Chad Sizemore in the 91. The 99 of Tim Lowe. Oh boy, the 87 of Smith, the 28 of Shockerford. G4 of Gergis the fourth. Gergis the third to his inside, the number 77. Eddie Rogers in the 11, the 22 of Chris Green. Jeff Armour in the 10, and I do not have a name for the 53. Bird. Of Bird. There is your lineup. That was that was my uh, that was my uh, participation in the starting lineup. Thank you, thank you. Tommy, fans on their feet. This is it. 90 minutes of insanity. 90 minutes of hold your breath action. And already a car stopped over. They're going to try and stop the field because yeah. Bird's car, the 53, <laughs> broke. Now, we have storylines, and we can hit them up right now. The 53 is one of them. Yep. Tommy, this car came out to practice earlier today. And immediately, we saw the rear end trying to fall out of this car. It sure did. It was swaying all over bad. But he made, he made it back. Just that, like. Just like the 91 machine of Sizemore, who we just got that quote from. He's in good spirits, and so is the team. But Tommy, broken suspension bits on, on the left front caused this team to have to do an emergency weld before qualifying so I, think could, I, I gotta correct you, I think it was the rear end of the car. But yes, you're right. They had to go. Oh, oh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but Jeffrey, they had to go get this thing welded on after qualifying. What was that, an hour? No time. They they did an emergency weld during qualifying, or to get him on track for qualifying, so he could start where he is starting. 53 Machine of Bird is pulling into the pit area already. Wow. Issues for that driver. And the pace truck scooting away. But you yeah, know what that means. They, they took it to the shop two streets away. The 91 machine got it back out here. They're ready to race. Good on that team at Sizemore. We'll keep an eye on what happens to Bird. Another car needs to get going here. Well, yeah, it's taking <laughs> nope. us a while. Nope. Stop. Taking us a while to get started on this one, man. Yeah, now what they're trying to do, <laughs> they're trying to get this whole field to bunch up and be together. Oh, man. But the number 10 machine was our, uh, our straggler. Well, yeah. they look punched up enough. You think this is the one? Third time's a charm? No. Nate, how you doing over there? He's, in. he's ready to go. He is speechless. <laughs> As we go ready for green flag racing, 90 minutes of no, action. No, no, one no, to no, go. no. I know. I'm oh, just, okay. I'm okay. just okay. building it Sorry, up. Sorry, guys. I had my headset off. My, my palms are sweating. My are they? Are, my fingers are slipping off the mouse and keyboard in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nate's ready. How do you think these drivers are feeling Yeah, right exactly. Now? Good thing they got gloves on. These races mean so much to these teams, these families that partake in these events, and the fans that show up here at Indianapolis Speedrome week in and week out. These are their main events.
90 minutes on the board as we get ready. The green flag is in the air. 90 minutes of figure eight racing at the Indianapolis Petrome. One lap complete, they're side by side for the lead. It's a tunny, tunny show with a tunny in third. Austin and Mark dueling it out. From the get go, getting the lead is vital. You don't want to just let someone take it like we sometimes see in other forms of racing because the split happens. You start getting into the intersection, you don't have time to recover and getting back in a mix of cars can always be dangerous. One car looks like it's having early issues, the 11 machine, Jeff Smith. Parked over on the back straightaway. Oh man, we haven't gotten to the crossover yet, but Jeffrey, this is one of those things that nobody talks about in figure eight racing with these cars, Jeffrey. The competition's so good. This is definitely some of the best short track racing that you can see on any given Saturday night. Caution flag is out for the 11 machine. Smith on the back straightaway, giving the signal to the crew. I can't make this car go. He's got no helmet on. Well, that's one way to, to bring out a yellow. Now, we Jeffrey, I do stand corrected. I called him Rogers. I was thinking of the other 11. Uh, so that is Smith. That is Jeff Smith over, over there. Um, here's the scene. Now, Tommy. Now we get into the conversation. This is an endurance race. You have issues early, you can recover. Just because you have an issue two minutes into the race, yeah. it's not a good start, but you're not out of it. This team's going to go to work on this car and try to get them back on track. And for those of you tuning in with us live maybe. on Low Budget TV, uh, maybe not. Oh, it might be a medical issue. Huh. Now this car from what we saw, didn't have any contact of any sorts. So bad luck continue to play the machine of Jeff Smith. But, I mean, they brought the EMT over, so we're gonna have to, we definitely are red here. Time stopped at 128.20. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, 19. It might have been, um, of course, these drivers are told to, in case of an emergency or anything, to signal to these crews, hey, Let's stop the race for a second. And he drove fair to him. He drove right up to the uh, fire yes. rescue guys, so he knew something was In wrong. Interesting issue here, Tommy. Um, I mean, there's there's obviously, and we won't speculate as to what's going on, but there's a number of things that could happen inside the car that you don't really think about. Sometimes you could just have wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact with somebody. The, the wheel goes cranked in one direction, and things get a little bit intense, so I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what's going on, but like we said, obviously hope the best for uh, Jeff Smith. I was referring to how this, this team will try to get the car back on track. That was in the event that the car was the issue. Like a mechanical issue. Right, right, but... Uh, and there there is an open pit rule in effect, meaning you can drive into the pits, fix whatever you needed, and come back out. Now so they're, we, they're signaling to the uh, to the drivers to uh, shut down their cars. So Pro cost. probably just because they're saying this is going to be a lengthy. Don't overheat. Right, right. Else. And at this, especially at this point, Tommy, two minutes into the race, you're not as much at risk as we know that sometimes in endurance races that can get you to shut down a car over, during a red flag. Yeah. Well, Jeff, at the start of this race, I mean, you can take me to any other short track in the country. You can take me to any other short track in the country and you would thrill me with double file battles up front. Right. And that's what we saw in the first. Oh, no, that's the thing with figure eight racing yeah. out here. It's not It's not just the intersection of uh -huh. why you watch this racing. It's because the racing is good. And we saw it here early lead uh, going to the number seven machine, got the clearance right before we had this. Can I go? Seriously? And you can see at the bottom of the screen, folks, follow along. You see some drivers climbing out, so they're, uh, it is warm one, so maybe they're just climbing out and getting some fresh air. But uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen, our ticker is running. I think I think Shackleford has to go to the bathroom. Yeah, so he's running. Could you imagine 
especially for the three hour. Also realizing, like, I realized what I forgot to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, now, now it's got a chance. So we are red, folks. And if any of you on our broadcast watching, enjoying this big great racing, a uh, very short start to it so far. Yes. But uh, feel free. We got Twitter. We want to have you tweet. We will show you on. And, and I want to point this out real quick. Uh, Jeff yeah. Smith is conscious. He's, he's sitting on the stretcher right now. I'm, I'm almost getting the indication that maybe oh, a yeah. leg issue. Something, yeah. But, but um, he is talking with the, uh, the EMTs. I think that's Sizemore who walked over there. Uh-huh. See, now, now all the drivers are, some drivers have walked away from their cars, so everyone else is walking up to those cars and seeing what kind of setup secrets they can get. Heck, yeah. But yeah, no, if you got Twitter, tweet us at LBTV underscore racing, and uh, we'll read off your tweets. I don't know if uh, Nate's got any to show of what we have so far, but think, of course. I think we got one. We love to interact with you. There we go. Tammy Lewis saying, get him, Chris Harmon, Jeff Harmon, and Corey Harmon. Good luck, guys. I think Tammy enjoys the Harmons. I think she's cheering on the Harmons. Dan saying, thank you for the stream. Drop your socks. Grab <laughs> your cocks. <laughs> he means roosters. <laughs> <laughs> your male chickens. We are taking our pair racing. Uh, well, I, I mean... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Tammy also saying good luck, Harmons and Norton. Now, now we got another one in there. We are one. Shag we have Shagelford is returning to his car, by the way. He got his pit stop. Teresa McAllister saying, so exciting, so many favorites. Stin, Jesse, Murphy, Hadley, Maddie, and a lot of periods. So the favorites so just roll it. Hit us up. Contact us on Twitter. We'll uh, we'll show your tweets. <laughs> Now, we do have cameras located around this track, not only on the broadcast, but extra footage you and I will be adding into our YouTube video down the road. We're talking, I don't know, whenever I get to it. It's sometimes in between three weeks to four months. <laughs> so if that's a perfect window. But we will be posting online uh, later, later, later on. You can also get a 30-day replay of this on replay with your live pass. So after that 30 days is when we'll be posting on YouTube the entire events with roof and in-car footage as well as cameras located around the track in case something happens that we don't catch and or awesome footage in between. So again, thank you all for joining with us live here from the Indianapolis Speedrome. Looks like the track is pretty much clear and we're getting ready to go back to racing in just a moment or two. So, plenty of time left in this race. We are on, on, you see the ticker at the bottom. On the timer, it says one hour, 28, 20. Plenty of time left in this race. Got an update for you, Tommy. What you got? So, racing is dangerous. Always is. And we know that. Um, sometimes, Especially this one. Sometimes it's not just your competition or the wall that you got to worry about. Sometimes it can be your own car. Okay. Jeff Smith uh -huh. broke a drive shaft, Ooh. came through the floorboard, wow. hit him in the leg. So that's... Ouch. Yeah. That's a lot of RPM. I saw them I saw them putting some uh, fluid dry up over in uh, in the area where his car was sitting. but That'd be the rear end and the transmission so that probably broke. That explains why we, of course, were like, huh, because we saw him waving. We, he we pulled over. He just pulled off the side of the road. I would have uh, done the same thing. Yeah, our, uh, our producer was uh, mentioning that same thing happened to his brother once. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a scary thing. That's a, that's a spinning, you know, metal part, component, oh, yeah. that matches the RPMs with your engine. Oh, yeah. When that thing <laughs> breaks loose, 
who knows where it's going to end up. Right, and we've we've seen that. Especially Normally they go onto the track and just spin around until they mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. But very little do they come through the floorboard. So that's that's our, our official answer on, on what happens with uh, Jeff Smith's machine. Uh, of course, hope for a quick recovery for Smith. You know, it, it, again, you talk about just rare occurrences. Sometimes the uh, those weird type of things that can happen with a race car. You never know. Nice. Um, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say a nice crowd on hand. You can see on the screen. Yeah. If since you weren't able to watch it from the track, hey, we're happy to bring it to wherever you're watching mm -hmm. it from. Some Absolutely. people watching on vacation. Some people. Watching from home, some people watching from outer space. Who knows? You think so? Maybe. Dang. I mean, I knew we had egos, but that's just astronomical. Build me a rocket ship. <laughs> that's right. You heard. <laughs> well, that uh, definitely a strange start to the 90 minute. Maybe they could be waiting to see if they can get the drive shaft put back in. I'm kidding. That's a bad joke. That's a bad joke. I mean, you see from the I, flag stand. I, I, I'll, I'll throw this in the air. I know how figure eight races are is I, what I'm saying. I, I, we've seen cars with drivers say uh, either, you know, I, I can't continue or I, I'm done or they think the car's done and they leave and the car gets fixed and they go, hey, send Billy out. Yeah. Who wants to drive? Well, remember at Orange Show, Jeffrey? Yes, I do. There was a big fight and Rod Proctor, who operates the racetrack. And to be clear, no drivers were involved in no, this No, 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 no. It somehow started in the stands and ended up outside of the track. But Rod Proctor had to take care of some business since it was the track that he ran. So he was like, well, hey, Tom Slick, Tom Smith, go jump in the car. He put on the fire suit and the helmet and continued the rest of the race. Right. <laughs> you never know. And that threw us for a loop because, uh, uh, yeah, we, we were just trying to figure out what was going on, too. Well, I can say that the cars are rolling again, and Chinese are still up front. Uh, you talked about how there's going to be some post-production stuff that, that we'll have going on. Yeah, and that's going to be down in a while. But, uh, so we like to give a lot of time, especially to the replay viewers. Yeah, essentially what we're saying is, hey, and it's a lot of footage we got to cut into. Yeah. That well, we got eight onboard cameras going. Uh, we got four corner cameras. We have our pit camera that's that's roaming around. I, I see Joe back there. I uh, and then we got our intersection camera. And, and a reminder: the intersection camera is logging footage all night. Oh yeah. So so if anything anything happens in that intersection, we got it covered. At all times, we got our flagman shot, and you see the one to go being given to the field. We're going to be continuing only a minute and 40 seconds into this beautiful sunset night at the Indianapolis Speed Drum. Everybody talked about how, oh, there's this big indie race happening in May, but they meant June, right? They were. They really <laughs> meant June, yeah. <laughs> they were just a few days off. We'll, we'll excuse them. This race last year, I think, landed on the Indy 500 weekend. Yep. All right, restart time. Getting ready for it. Watching the flagman as he gets ready to unleash him. And the clock is rolling. And again, we continue on with that great side-by-side -side racing. Every the qualifying lineup, or the qualifying results, I should say, were so close throughout this field. Oh yeah, we were hearing about. I think I think the top 18 cars were all within seven tenths of a second. Unbelievable. Now we do have one car. We'll continue watching this battle up front. Mid pack, we have one car that is starting to smoke, trying to identify which car it is. It might be the double zero of Turner. Now Turner. They were working under the hood quite a bit before qualifying, so that double zero car may have some other issues going on. If that is his car that's smoking, we'll keep an eye on it. Up front, new leader, number three machine, hello, Mark Tutting. And this time by Jeffrey, 
Get ready for the crossover. No, no. Battle back here, Calvin Crane and Harmon. But that kind of thing, that's going to bunch up. You see this tin? It just took one hesitation, one saying, no, I'm not going to make it. Already loses the lap. Now it's Shackleford's turn in the 28. Not going to make it this time. He's got to hope that when the leaders come by next time by, that they don't rear end them. Here they come. It's that easy to lose a lap. It is crucial to try and stay in a pack because that is your best defense going through the intersection. A single car rarely will go up against caution flag comes out again. Looking around, I do not know what this one's for. Yeah, neither do I. Nobody's parked. In the pits. They pits are indicating 87. 22 officials pointed at them. I don't quite know what that means. Trouble for the 87 in pit road right now. Oh yeah, wow, early issues for the 87 machine of Matt Smith. There you see Matt's car, we're up close with it. Gloves coming off, Tommy, not a good sign here for no, Smith. Not at all. Daniel coming off, it looks like he's done for the night. They don't seem to be in a, in a rush to fix anything. And they're not sure what's going on with the 22 machine. He's located very deep into the pits. Yeah, Jeff, everybody, and he's out. Calvin Crane and the C4 going into the pits. Rain was located in the It's not gonna jump. That Calvin Crane C4 pulled off into the pit area. Dynamite. I I'm still unsure of what exactly the caution's out for, but because this isn't a red flag situation, Tommy, the clock is still rolling. Yeah. And here comes Crane. So Crane will return. Now, for reference, if you look in the bottom left corner, you'll see time remaining, an hour and 24 minutes. Tommy, the race is almost done at this point. It's go time. Oh yeah, time to get up on the wheel. Is it ever not go time? Can you ever relax in a race like this? I don't think so. I mean, outside of maybe under caution. <laughs> but even then, you're thinking about, okay, what do I got to do? feel like it's a, a pretty big deal, though, Chris Green having his issue. Yeah, he has yet to return. But again, this is an endurance race, which means we're counting caution laps. Green flag in the air. We're back. Over those rumble strips. With the advantage, Austin Tunney trying to clear. Mark Tunney. Mark's not gonna let that one go easily. Moving to the third spot, the number four machine, Mike Hanley Jr. I believe we now refer to him as the three hour figure eight world champion. Yeah. Of 2017. Flying around, turn number two on this figure eight course. Drivers hanging it out wide. Still side by side by side up front. Yellow. Oh, stack up. Well, that's a problem. What happened over there in the turn? Every car has got collected. It looks like it's the number... A 69 machine involved. That's uh, RJ Norton. And the car we're Junior. looking at the back of is the 42 of Nick Moore. Flat right rear tire for the 69. The 29 involved looks like he has cosmetic damage. The 42 machine of Nick Moore, he is staying on track as well. Only car to pull into the pits from that issue was the number 69 machine. Well, we haven't we haven't jinxed anyone yet. No. With our onboard cameras, sometimes we worry about that. Not, not sure if Nate has a replay on that one. Maybe from the flag stand, that's probably the only shot that might may have been on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. No? Okay. Not. 
Tommy, it looked like your classic going into the turn. One Stack car had a nose yep. underneath, and and when these cars have contact, you can see the bumpers on these things. They uh, they'll spike you. Yeah. They'll, they'll get in your tire. We saw it happen in the three-hour. Yes, figure we did. Eight. Yes, we did. And it helped determine who ended up in victory lane. So black flag being issued. Or the Looks C4. Like, yeah, the crane machine who was just in the pit area. Now they, they do have rules that we've we've come to know. Sometimes uh, you gotta be careful in that pit area. I remember I think during the three hour we had a, a speeding penalty come up at one point. Just a driver going through a little bit too excessively. All I think they ended up doing was relegating him to where he should have been coming out in the pit. So don't know if it has, well, he's still out there. Yeah, not sure what's going on. Is he gonna pull in the wrong way? I think he just wants an answer. We do have a car that is returning to the track. You see RJ Norton. He's just gonna block. Oh, here you go, Tommy. Classic figure eight. <laughs> well, the black flag was issued to that car. Also returning to the track, the 22 machine of green. Green is going to be our first major example of why you never give up. Never give up. In an endurance race. He still has a shot at a top five. There's no telling what's going to happen tonight. Yeah, Jeffrey, you can see some incredible things happen in these races. Cars, good cars go a lap down early. Yep. Now, cars that started in deep in the field make their way forward. You see the ticker at the bottom of the screen. Now, Crane's still trying to get back on track here. Some underneath the rear end. And you can see the driver is uh, not happy. Well, we're going back to go. racing. Lap 20, hour and 20 minutes to go. You're still in it. We look at the C4 machine of Crane. They're all over the rear bumper of that car. Trying to figure some out. A lot of hands going up saying, what do you want? Could what do a, we need? Could be a potential fuel or uh, oil leak. Battles continue up front, Jeffrey. Austin Tunney, Mark Tunney duking it up for the lead. And that second row, Hadley and Ben Tunney. Third row, Jesse Tunney and Harmon in the number six. Settles down for your top two. Austin Tunney, your leader. 24 laps in to this 90 minute race. Just the update, Crane has pulled his car, put it in reverse. Looks like he's headed back to the pit area. Not sure what the issue is there. A lot of confusion, it seems like, with the crew trying to get answers. But that car may be done for the night. Once again, the number 10 machine sees the leaders go by. Jeff Armour holding on tight. It's survival, Tommy. It's survival of the fittest in a race like this. And when you go a lap down, that doesn't mean your race is over in no. this. You just got to try to hang on and get your lap back or try to hold on to the lap that you're on and not lose too much more. That's what Armour's doing right now. Trying to just stay with the pack. Off the Tunney, checking out. Look at this, your leader through the intersection. It begins, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Chris Chris uh, Green in the 22. He had to go way out of bounds. Not that there is an out of bounds. Oh, boy. <laughs> you see the stack up. These drivers don't want to let off. I mentioned the double zero machine, by the way. I thought I saw some smoke maybe coming from that car. I got to give dues to Corey Turner. That driver right now, 10th place. Made it in the top 10, Green had to let off, didn't want to risk too much. 
risk versus reward right now early on in this race. But man, I'll tell you what, does the seven machine of Austin Tunney want this one? Oh yes, he does. He is pulled away to a near straightaway lead over Mark Hadley in second. But Tommy, the thing we talk about is these leaders. Tunney's all by himself. He doesn't have the benefit of a big crowd with him. Correct. So that he's he's him. a lone man. He's, he's a lone ranger. Yeah. It's lonely up front. Good battle from second on back. Three wide in the middle of the pack. Garrigus, the G4 machine, makes it through the intersection. Aggressive driving. These drivers fight tooth and nail for a strong position. 77 had to lit off coming to the intersection. Donnie Garrigus. Oh, oh boy. boy. You see why. Hadley, trying, Hadley right. trying to beat on the back bumper of Mark Tunney saying, hey, man, let's go. Uh, through the intersection, they're door slamming to make it through. You got to find your hole. You got to dedicate yourself to that hole. If you don't make it through, you're done. And they're going. <laughs> your leader's having to go right through the middle. Your leader right now is setting up to have a very good race. Now you know Separated what? Separated himself from the pack. Now you know why we got this dual view. Oh, your caution flag. I got too excited because I saw the seven slow down. I went, don't tell me. I was going to say, man, I'm recording him just fine, and he's slowing for the yellow. Looks like debris. Looks like a transponder. Oh, well, someone. If I, if I could figure it out. You can see the official looking at the transponder. He's got a number on there, so he's got to report it to the one in charge of distributing them. I don't see anyone who's lost a lot of laps, unless it's someone who's already lost a lot of laps. 42. It was a 42 who was involved in that last yellow, so maybe the bracket broke loose or something. Here you see a replay going on the screen. Oh, my goodness. How close it's been in that crossover. That intersection has been insane. Look at the whoa up. Whoa. Get through. And that's your leader going by. And I already know how this turns out, but I'm still on the edge of my toes. That's not a lot. <laughs> look at Harmon making it through there. Look at look at this move. Now, this is heads up driving. Harmon, some drivers, and there's your leader, by the way. Yeah, right in front of your leader, the right seven. Right in front. Harmon, already, way before he got to the intersection, he, no, knew. he had to make this move. Heads up driving right there by the 17 machine. I, I, Tunney didn't want to see this caution, man. He was he was checked out. He was on a Saturday night drive. Checked out like a cheap hotel. And they're putting the transponder back underneath the 42. You're making the uh, officials go to work here. Folks out there in Twitter land, what do you like so far? You like what you I, I want to know uh, if there's anyone else who wants to put in for who they think is going to win this Yeah, one. absolutely. Fisher's giving the thumbs up. Moore is going to put it in gear and drive away. Nice. Be gone. And now it's just a lonely piece of pavement until. We're listening to the iPod of the Flagman. <laughs> I should wear those. Uh, those those uh, earmuffs earmuffs at work. You should. I should. Then I won't you have can to block out your coworkers. Then I <laughs> block out my manager. Yeah. Probably won't. Probably won't uh, be a good longevity. Whatever. I'm surprised you haven't put that on, so you won't have to listen to me. <laughs> I already got him on. That's the problem. Is you go right through. Oh. Uh, all right. Pace truck is rolling. We have 72 minutes left in this race. Long way to go. Oh man, Shackleford almost rear into Garrigus coming to, <laughs> just to get caught up. Green flag, we're back. Oh, some contact there. Couple cars drifting up. One car gets hooked and almost spins out and stacks up the field. 
Laura's going to be the champion on the outside, trying to make it work. Donnie Murphy almost got turned there. Held on to it, though. Big old pack right in the middle of the field. Austin Denny remains your leader. We got lap cars that are mixed with lap, lead lap cars. Three wide action, and there goes the 17, gets clipped, holds on to it. He had an early exit to his three hour a couple months ago. Definitely looking for a good run here tonight. Don't look now, up to the second spot, the number five machine. Ben Tunney. They are flying around that turn number two. Hadley to the inside of Mark Tunney. That four machine. Looking for a good bite off the turn, but can't make the clearance. See, these cars don't want to give the other one too much room. Heck no. Oh, and we're running out of room. Shackleford in the 28, man, he threaded the needle through the intersection a second ago. Doing it again, the seven machine, Tommy Austin, Tony separating himself from the field again. Got a fast race car here tonight. That was Donnie Gerges who was woed up at the intersection, he continues. Oh, most contact with your leader. Green went through and nearly took the left rear of the 750. But look at all these cars, Tommy, battling for second. Oh, three rows deep, side by side, on a fifth of a mile. Here's our dual view, and there's a reason we're using it. Oh, contact in the intersection. A couple cars pile in. Durham in the 3D machine. Look like the 42 caution flag is out. I don't know if that was race any damage but Durham's car has got to be hurting. Yeah, he took it in the suspension. That 3D machine pulls it into the pit area. And that car is located in the middle of the pit area. I should say. The, the 3D. Yeah, where I think Joe can possibly go over there and run and get it. Gonna see if he can take a look and see what's being fixed on me. That was madness. That intersection, man, it it is a wild one. Durham, you see, the crew's running over to the car, doing everything they can to fix it. Hopefully our cable is long enough to reach. <laughs> They're surveying the damage right now, already have the jack underneath, Tommy. What kind of damage are we looking at here? You're looking at front end damage, cosmetic, and that thing is pushed over to the left. Is that is that radiator Sol area right Sol there? Sol's all coming into play. No, radiator's fine. But yeah, definitely want clearance there on those tires. I, I don't see too much work happening to suspension right no, now. No, that's what they're checking out right now. They're checking the toe, checking the tie rod, making sure the wheels are pointing in the right direction, making sure the car is steering. For every second that passes, Durham is losing time right now. The minute is, are the clocks ticking right now? Here's a replay. As they go oh. through. The 29 St. John's, there. Tommy St. John's, had his whole pick. It decided just, that wasn't the right spot. Way too late yep. of a decision. Look, I, if there's not suspension damage either of those cars, I won't know how. I'm impressed if it's not, but St. John's still on track. I mean, and so, as well as the 42. Uh, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to take that back. 42 he's in the did, pits. 42 did pull it off. Nick Moore. They're still working on Durham's car, Tommy. I feel like they're they're more worried about that, that front area. Yeah. But we're going back to racing. 78 minutes to go. Shackleford was off track. He pulls back on track, that 28 car. Shackleford, I think, having a long night. There's no, you see it on screen. It is, yep, a radiator going into Durham's car. They're ready for this, an endurance race. You never give up. This isn't a points pain race. No. But he still has an opportunity to maybe pull off a top five, top 10 in this. They are going to work. And Jeffrey, you never know how these races go. And there might be a red flag in a second. Yep. You don't know. 
I tell you what, the class of the field here tonight, Tommy, that set machine, oh, round goes the 99. Smoke show for the 99 of Lowe's. Jim Lowe gets it going again. A lot of attention, man, but a lot of smoke. <laughs> Laid down by the 99. Oh, right in front of your leader. Oh, Near disaster. And Mark, Johnny right on the back bumper of Austin Tenney now. Logue needs a breather after that moment. The 99 is just waiting for the pack to come. Lap traffic here, Shackleford with Tunney, and that's woven him up. Here comes Mark Tummy. Here comes Hadley. Here comes the field. And let me remind you, this is some of the best short track racing. It just happens to be on a figure eight course. <laughs> Almost disaster for Garrigus. He got he got squirrely, nearly nosed it into the wall. Off the track, the 99 machine, Tim Logue, he's got an issue. He's into the pits. And look at this that your leader has to go through. You talk about threading a needle. Oh yeah. That's the definition right there. Austin Tunney, man, he's doing everything he can to stay ahead of the wave. Sometimes if you fall back just a little bit, it can knock you down to the bottom. Green had to wall it down, the 22 machine. Now he's battling with your leader, doesn't want to lose another lap. Gives room though. Mark Tunney there, fighting with him. Looking at the 99 machine of Logue, they're looking under that right front area, trying to get something going on with that suspension maybe. Could be a tire that's going down. Up front, continues to be all about the seven machine of Austin Tunney. See these battles going on back here. Mid Tunney falling a little deeper in the pack. And he's getting a whole lot of loving from that 21 machine of Mike Riddle Jr. Helmets off of the driver load. Whoa, leader. Yep. Now we go back through the crossover. I don't think Logue's done though. They're still working to put that, looks like a right front tire on. We'll see what happens here in the coming laps. In a race like this, Tommy, is there a benefit to being that driver that everybody knows doesn't lift? Yeah, because then you can, I guess they slow down for you or they give you room. Yeah, but, but how, how much are you risking to become that driver? Exactly, and what well, the problem is, is you don't give respect, no one gives respect back. And they'll remember it. Sometimes they'll even aim for you <laughs> so you can be scared. And you're not kidding. Yeah. Dual view, looking at. The intersection shot, Tiny working his way through. He's gonna beat this group of cars. We look at the battle for a second there on the top left. Returning to the racetrack. Ninety-nine of Logue back on track. Here comes Harmon making a look to the inside of Hadley for the third spot. Chris Harmon is a six. Durham has not made it back on track, Tommy. But we have a car sitting there. We've seen this play out before. Watch out for the tin machine of armor. Sometimes that's the, the bigger incident than yeah. usually a hit in the intersection. Absolutely, battle for third. Here comes Hadley. Harmon on the outside. Cars blowing up at the intersection. Slowing down, letting the pack go. Nobody's made this race look easier to me than the seven machines doing tonight. Yeah, definitely. That car is smoking, smoking fast. Garrigus in the 77 gets going again. Oh man, it is tight in that intersection. Tony, you're a leader. 
Tunney in second. I think the surprise to me, Tommy, has to be Ben Tunney slipping back to seventh. I'm not too surprised, Jeffrey. He's strategy, I'm guessing, by the way he's going right now. Right oh. here, the number five. We've, we've talked about strategy and how much tires can play into this I race. I think that this is by design. I think he's going to make it a no-stop race. Well, I want to give a shout out to the 91 machine right now battling for the top five. That's Sizemore in the 91 machine. Remember, didn't get a good qualifying lap because they had to literally weld the thing together just to get a qualifying lap. Got it on track, took it to the shop a few streets away, welded it up properly, got it back here in time for the race. He's up to fifth. Great run for the 91 of Chad Sizemore. Don't Not, count him out. It's no fun to have to take it. Oh, a whoa, up, and the 10 gets back going. Sorry about that. Didn't I was going to say, it's, it's no fun to have to take your car to the shop an hour before the green flag wave. Again, oh, that was Harmon in the 17 just making it through. It is, there's no, literally, nowhere to hide unless you're off the track. And even then it could get hairy in the pits. Oh, definitely. Hadley all over the pumper of Harmon. Harmon just trying to work around Armour. Armour a lap car. Sizemore went just about all the way to the front straight away to get around the intersection a second ago. This, it's, it's aggressive, Tommy. We have, and by the way, there's an hour of this left. Oh, okay, thank you. Go time. Harmon in that 6H machine, trying to get by Mark Tunney in the 3 team for the second spot lap. Traffic up ahead, Harmon getting into the back of Tunney. Marksman, Mark Tunney, but they gathered up and keep going. You don't want to see this if, if you're Tunney. It's a wall of lap traffic here. It leaves you with nowhere to go but through him. You might have to. He goes to the outside of Garrigus, the fourth. There's another huge pack of racing, Tommy, going right around turn two right now. Or three, four, eight, I don't know. 21 machine of Mike Riddle. Jeffrey Turner is on a mission right now in the double zero. He really is. He started in the back of the pack. Turner up to ninth now, and he's battling. Actually, with that pass, he gets around Ben Tunney. Who goes back to 10. Turner up to eight. I'm sorry, ninth. So many passes going on, I'm trying to keep up. Your leader, a half a track to the five of Ben Tunney. Our leader, Austin Tunney, that seven machine, all by himself. Yeah, Jeffrey, he is making it look easy now. But but let's be let's be fair. Yeah. We talk about this big lead that he has. It's about half a turn. Oh, yeah, hard on the brakes. <laughs> There's a lot of drivers still right there with him right now. Two seconds back, Mark Tunney. Six machine, Chris Harmon. Four of Hadley. Sizemore's coming through. Well, it looks like they got Sizemore's car fixed up, that's for sure. 91 to the driver's right of Garrigus. I'll agree with the Sizemore comment there, yeah. If this is not for position, but every pass Sizemore gets, no matter if it's lap traffic or not, is another pass that he would not have made had they not been able to fix that car. Great, great recovery, a redemption run for that team. So technically the endurance race happens even before the race even goes green. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey, we're at the time now where we got two big packs meeting each other in the crossover. And we got some lap traffic intermixed, so it's gonna slow up one pack, it brings it right back to the next. They keep meeting each other, it's like a mirror. It is. And it, that pack actually held up Ben Tunney. He lost track of the uh, pack he was with. Want to point out, 
our leader is on the same side of the track as I gotta find him, he's so far ahead. As if you look way up in the distance, Ben Tunney and the seven of Austin Tunney are on the same side of the track, Tommy. There's Ben Tunney in the five. Turn four, shot, there you see on the screen. We might see pit stops later. Drivers may take tires. Now, if we do see those pit stops, Jeffrey, they would have to happen under yellow. There's no chance yeah. you're gonna take under no. green. Corey Harmon in the 17 got airborne off of one of the, the turn dots and tried to do it again. And again. <laughs> Maybe that's a secret. Yeah, those things aren't easy on your suspension. You gotta take it easy over those dots, Jeffrey, because you do not want to have anything break your suspension loose, any ball joints, any uh, tie rods scraping on the bottom end and bottoming out, control arms and everything else. We've been racing for 35 minutes. We still have 11 cars on the lead lap. Very telling for the, the co competition in this field. Absolutely. Next car, or I should say last car on the lead lap is the 20 machine of John Connor Jr. If he looks in his mirror, he's gonna see three black cars and one of them is the leader. Oh, this is weird. That's, wow, I don't oh. know. That really messed up half. I have no idea. And that was all near your leader, Austin Tunney. Oh man, Hadley really got messed up in that. Lost some time there. There's a, you're looking at it. This pack right here is just full of drivers moving. Cause they got to. If they don't hurry up, they're gonna be seeing the leader in just a few laps. I'm always amazed. I'm, I'm always amazed how they do it. I don't know. And Sizemore's gonna try it again. Woo! Well, here is your leader, Austin Tunney, coming up to, like you said, Jeffrey, earlier on. Yep. A wall of lap traffic. Sizemore. Oh! Getting hit. That was Connor getting into Harmon. And they gotta hurry, because here comes Tunney. I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit. In an endurance race, you have a shot. Oh, wow, Tommy, big development off track, the number four machine of Mike Hadley. Uh-oh, world champion of last year, having to head into the pits. Taking a look at the right side of the car. Oh, they're going under the hood on this one. That is a major development in this race. What I was going to say was that these drivers, you do not want to lose a lap. No. But at the same time, if you fall out of the race like Hadley's doing right now, you want to get back in as fast as you can. You get back in to try and get a top five, maybe a top 10. But if you lose a lap, you're starting to lose your hope on winning the race. Yes. Absolutely. These drivers didn't come here to finish in the top five. But but just because you're losing your hope on winning doesn't mean that you're completely out of the race. Like you just said, you got to stay in it to win it. You got to stay in it to survive. And figure racing, Jeffrey, you just got to take what you can grab, really. That's how you finish these races. Just take what you can get. Things are spreading out just a bit here. Tunney has lapped John Connor Jr. And with Hadley falling out, 
That leaves us with nine cars on the lead lap and the 21 right in front of your leader and the 17 trying to stay in front of Tunney. They are not gonna make this easy on them. No, they're not. Not at all, Jeffrey. They did not come here to get a lap down. They've been working hard all weekend. And they see your leader coming by, the 21 of the Riddler, Mike Riddle. And if any of these drivers are playing that strategy, maybe saving their tires, right now you start going, uh-oh. Exactly. Maybe if you've done this before, which I don't know how many, this is only the second spring shootout, but Jeffrey, anytime you see the leader pass you to go a lap down, no matter what strategy you're on, you have to dig out of a hole. Yep. It no longer becomes your race. You suddenly have a secondary race you have to worry about, that's just getting ahead of the leader. Ooh, whoa up, it was Riddle who almost got into armor. Armor had to do something real squirrely to prevent any big issues happening. That tank car still trying to gather it up. Well, we got a new second place runner. It looks like the 6H of Chris Harmon. Jeffrey, very, very fast early this year in February in Florida. You're right, Tommy. That, uh, he snuck by uh, Mark Tunney in that 3T machine. They were working past Riddle. Sizemore in the 91. He is fourth place. Still very much in this. Oh, some lap traffic getting into each other there in the intersection. Green in the 22. That number 80 machine oh. of Murphy. All these drivers are going to have to figure out a way around. Jeffrey, not too far behind. Ben Tunney, the driver who's on a tirade for wins this season at the speed drone, not too far behind, is your leader. Nobody saw this coming. I can tell you right now, Tommy, we, oh, double zero machine off the pace. Turner smoking it up. We talked about smoke coming from that car earlier in the night. And the double zero machine looks like he may be out of it. Jeffrey, that, that true, that crew has done an incredible job getting that car working. Oh man, Tommy, up. He was driving up there around the fifth spot. It shows how fast that car is, but mechanical gremlins took him out. Yeah, it, it was kind of a, you were wondering how far that car may make it. So much work happening under the hood. We didn't get word on what they were working on, but Sometimes those are telltale signs that they're chasing something. Jeffrey, there is not one single car between Ben Tunney and Austin Tunney. I have gotta know what's gonna happen when Ben sees the leader making a pass for him. Does that wake Ben Tunney up if he's on a strategy? Or does he play cool ice water through his veins? I, or does he just not have a card tonight? I don't know, I mean, like you said, the 2018 season for the five, tells us it's been a breeze here for him. When we talked about, hey, who would you put money down, we both agreed that you wouldn't put money down on Ben Tunney because you wouldn't make any money. You wouldn't make any money. His odds would be too high. <laughs> well, the, the cars on the crossover are helping Ben Tunney gap over the leader, Austin Tunney. Whew. Some bumper tack happening through the intersection. We're and... And, and your leader slipping back into the grasp of Chris Harmon and third place, Mark Tunney. All right, so now comes the other side of this equation. If you are Ben Tunney and you have been saving your car and you realize, well, wait, I, I can't let the seven car get by me, you're going to start holding him up. That's going to hold up Austin Tunney and allow him to get in the clutches of this battle coming up from behind. We are closing in on the halfway point in this race. You see the green taker on the bottom left, 47 minutes, 47 seconds. Some big developments happening in the last few minutes. Mike and, you're, and you're watching it right now, too. You're watching another big one. I was gonna say Hadley out, Turner out, both cars well in the top six. 
now you have Ben Tunney, arguably the favorite coming into tonight to get the victory. At risk of going a lap down, gives room to the seven machine of Austin Tunney. Wow. One lap down to the five if they make it back to the line. It's official. Ben Tunney, one lap down. If he comes back from this, I can't wait to see how. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, they got a stack up in front of your leader though. Austin Tunney. Now Ben Tunney's probably going, oh crud. Here comes Harmon in the 6-H. Harmon on a mission. This is falling right into Harmon's lap right now. It's Kentucky going to take this one home. I don't know. He's got to get around a fast number well, seven. When we got here earlier today and we did some uh, broadcasting earlier, I remember you saying something about no matter what track we seem to go to, it's Indy drivers. Yep. And now we're at the Indy track. Look out for Kentucky. And Jeffrey. Jeff Harmon in the 16 had the race won on strategy, but then the strategy, that sand and that luck. Oh, went. up in smoke goes the 12 machine. The outlaw. Austin, flag is out. Jesse Tunney. This car was in fifth place. Mechanical issues being so far the story of the night in any endurance race. You're going to have stuff like this. Tommy, that car is up in smoke. There it is, looking at that 12 machine with an expired motor. That's gotta be such a feeling of dejection. You've been on the lead lap the whole night. You've done everything you needed to do. He's setting himself up perfectly. Tommy, things were going that 12 car's way. And Eric, want to mention, by the way. Ben uh, Tunney just pulled it into the pits. All right, is this the strategy? Pit strategy now at the halfway point. There he goes. So right behind Joe, if he turns around, he'll be able to see the five crew going to the pits. Here they all running. He's a lap down. It's a nice long yellow. He's got to get the I can't. 12. Got to get towed off. So yeah, no, this is a good, this is a good perfect time opportunity to take advantage of this, Tommy. Now, Jeffrey, you talked about it. If he can bury himself out of a lap, down, and somehow go to win this thing, he's got four fresh tires getting ready to be bolted on this thing and a setup change. There it is. You see the the tire change happening right now. And of course, these things have to be the wide five wheels, so it's not like. The NASCAR Cup Series, where they're all right within a few inches of each other, you so have to go entirely around the outer rim. So instead of re, 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 it's re, re. Yeah. <laughs> tire and, and, out, and again, tire in. Laps are counting right now. Oh yeah. It's not. It's not like oh, okay, we'll see how it goes. Ben Tunney's making the call. That tires. He's the only one I think that came in here for this, uh, for a. a Pit stop. I love stop. this, Jeffrey. I love this strategy taking place right now. We are short track racing. In a 90-minute endurance race, we have strategy going on. One of the heaviest hitters of the speed drum this season is in the pits. Car's down, and it is rolling away. We're giving Joe a workout tonight. Heck, yeah, we are. He's going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> now, now, Tony right now, he's like, all right, let me out. But... Jesse Tunney in a way. That's what happens when you have 18 Tunneys racing. <laughs> Eventually you're going to get one into another. Coming back to staging lanes, you see the number 20 of John Connor, the Terminator. I just, I want to point out something, man. We started with 26. Actually, I'm going to say 27. 53 machine, a bird never made a lap. But we, we had 27 cars show up here tonight. And with Tunney coming back on track, oh, well, there's a line of them coming back on track. Let's see who else is coming back on here. A whole number of cars taking advantage of this. Connor, Garrigus, Riddle. So a couple cars that were a lap down. Tommy lost a few laps in that exchange. But that could also be something that gets remedied in the event that they come into pit. 
If your leaders come in. Done. Done. Not a soul to be found around the floor. The world champion of Mike Hadley. You see the number 12 machine. That thing looked like it popped a motor. The way that there was oil coming out of the flames and everything else. Yeah, that that looked pretty determined. I'm actually surprised that they didn't have to put anything down. So I guess, I guess not a lot of fluid coming out of that one. Also returned into the track, the 80 machine, and pulled it in. So now, Tommy, we have five cars on the lead lap. Okay. You know what? Something going on with the 17 of Harmon as well, but you can see they're taking a look at the 12 of the outlaw, Jesse Dunney. I mean, sometimes you could have something that throws up smoke like that. And have an oil line or something. Yeah, though the way that he got out of that car, I wasn't I wasn't feeling like like there was a lot of hope there. I'm gonna confirm here. Because I noticed that uh, our monitor stopped. But I see that we're still on lap we're on 131 according to the track. So I was wondering if they, if our monitor didn't feel like counting. You see, Looks like you, Jesse is back in the car. They're, they're working on that thing for something. And this gentleman just got a new cold beer, fresh cold beer. And it, the camo it, shirt. It, hitching them up. Well, I just heard it from the tower. 12 cars still trying. You can see. They're working on that thing, thrashing away. I mean, you so don't. I thought he blew up. You don't. You don't change tires. No. When if your engine blows up. up. Yeah. I think you can smell the smoke from here. I smell something. I mean, it. Maybe this is a strategy. Maybe he caused the caution. Obviously not, but yeah, they're bolting out some fresh meats. Logue over there in the 99 you see in the background. Looks like they're doing some work to that car. Here's the pit area, <laughs> the pit walk. Well, well, that's curious. I like, uh, I think something happened to our pace car, by the way. Did it fall out of the race too? I think so, because look what's pacing it the did. pit. It did fall out of the race. Oh no. Trouble tonight, mechanical oh, issues everywhere. Man. Wait Not a minute, now now our, our safety truck fell out and we have a new truck pacing the field. Well. This, oh my God, is this, that strategy on the I officials part? I think it part? was, I think they came in to park the truck to save it for next week. Might have ran out of gas. Crew chief of the pace truck did not pack enough fuel in. Are you, are you good to go to the end on this? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Then I got go. enough fuel. Good man. All right, Jeffrey, so we've seen these two duking it out before the caution. I don't think that battle's done yet. All right, Austin Tunney's been living large in this one. Oh, but Harvin wants it. It is Kentucky versus Indy. And Harvin takes the lead. First time we've seen a lead change here tonight, but they are fighting and gouging for it. You're right, there he goes. Chris Harmon, but here comes Austin Tunney fighting back on the right side. This is another thing I love about figure eight racing. You, you're good on the left turn, yeah. well I'll see you on the rights. And yeah, you take advantage of the lane that you're getting passed on. Oh, contact Connor, it climbed over the 22 of green, but they all continue on. Jeffrey Luke, who's going for third. It is Sizemore. That 91 machine, what a comeback story for them. Off the pace is the 22 machine of green. He just got climbed over by Connor. And that car looks like he's gonna maybe park it, I don't know. Sizemore into the third spot. This car on a trailer 
after qualifying. This car left the track today at about, what was it? Like 6.15? Yeah. Less than two hours later, we were lined up on the front straightaway. Jeffrey, now we're gonna see how good those fresh meets do. I know the five and the lap down. Ben Tunney trying to race his way back. Tunney is three laps down. Three laps, even worse. But if the leaders ever decide it's time to come into pit, they're gonna lose some laps too. He should have no problem getting at least one lap back. That's what he's got to do right now. And he's not the only one. The 20 machine of Connor trying to follow through as well. He has fresh tires on his machine. Thirty-six minutes to go. And battle with Sizemore. It's not for position, but it is been Tunney trying to get up to the leaders. Are fielding and, on track in front of your leaders. Oh yeah, they are. It's getting thick. <laughs> Open pit area. Some contacts happening further back in the pack between the 77 machine of Donnie Garrigus with a 29. Tommy St. John actually sitting in the sixth position. A lot of family history with this Huge race. Huge family history. Here right now is the first car one lap down. Here comes Logue in the 99 returning to the track. And sitting and ready to pull into the infield or actually into the pit area is the 22 of Green. Troubles continue for the 22. Not for position, but we're watching the five of Ben Tunney drive his way to get a, a lap back from three. Was this? this one. Oh, climbing over, it's Connor. He climbs over the left rear of Sizemore. Will there be damage on either of those cars, Tommy? It looks like the 20 machine may have busted a hose or something. It looks and like, it, yeah. yeah. I see the steam. Mechanical issue. Flash. No, that was a... <laughs> oh, Sizemore off the track with a flat right rear, Oh, possibly. what an up. That is a bummer for the 91. I know the airs were still in the tire, but major cosmetic damage. Could be suspension. Here comes Tunney, trying to get one of his three laps back. Starting to get aggressive. Did you ever last year in this race? John Connor had contact. There he goes. And fell out of this race again, same this year. Man. You can tell that six does not want to give Tony his lap back. And Harmon might not know that he's just three laps down, now two laps down. I think he's racing him for the spot. That raises a question, and you may know this. Do these drivers have any communication? You're shaking your head no. Ray Siever. They listen. One-way radio. To the race control. Yep. Well, Ben Tenney back on a lead lap, but he's still got two more to go. Yes. 91 machine, Tommy Sizemore. They're trying to change the right rear, it looks like. But there is a lot of stuff going on in that area. Take a look at this screen, Jeffrey. Look who's back. The 12 machine, I, I didn't, I called that it was a blown motor. Me too. It was not. How about the return of the 12 of Jesse Tunney? And this is what I always love about endurance racing. Yeah. Always love drivers still putting in the effort to pick up as many spots as they can. And we've had a weird, you know, a couple big uh, cars fall out. By the way, Harmon's still not letting Tunney keep his lap. <laughs> they are racing hard for it right now. Oh, yeah. Also back on track, the 91 machine of Sizemore. But he has lost spots, lost laps. Still holding on to that ninth spot. No matter what his result, Jeffrey, I feel like that's somewhat of a win. Oh, you're Oh, Tunney! Whoa. Get through! 
Austin Tunney and Jesse Tunney had a moment. And that just fell into the lap of Mark Tunney, battling for position now. And they lost touch with Harmon. Tunney, Ben Tunney that is, has cleared away from Harmon big time now. I thought we were, I thought that was it. That was close. So but that's the battle for a second right here on Scar. One of the things, Tommy, in this race, you can be good, but you need to be lucky. <laughs> yeah, especially in big eye racing. You need a lot of stars to align to win one of these, and it's why these drivers put all the time, effort, money into these cars to give themselves a chance to take home the trophy. And how much is it to win tonight? Nice, cool $10,000. I think that would uh, sit just nicely. It'll definitely pay for the fuel and travel to get to and from uh, Kentucky. The battle for second continues on. Tony having to, both Tonys working around that traffic. We had a moment in the intersection, but they made it through. Just a couple cars having to split what direction they were going. And the 10 was up in the intersection. He needs to hope he doesn't get rear-ended. He's almost sitting in the intersection. Yeah, he was almost ready to open up the cooler and have a sandwich, man. <laughs> he was only there for what? five seconds, but that's sometimes too long. He, and all he was doing is trying to get back to going again. St. John's looks like he's down some an issue with the 29. He's pulling it to the pit area. Intersection giveth, the intersection taketh away. <laughs> 30. Yeah, St. John stalled in pit road. Should be in a safe enough spot to push the car. They are pushing it. St. John's, remember, was in the top 10. No, oh, Jesse Dunny, my goodness. Whoa, how did that work? I right in front of your leader. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, St. John, Tommy, was six. Falls out here. And again, drivers like Sizemore, who lost laps, they have the opportunity to pick up some of those spots, climb the ladder, gain some more money. Less than 30 minutes to go. We are two thirds of the way into this race. We've had turn of events. We had one driver dominate the beginning of Austin Tunney. And you know what? I'm just going to say it. Harmon's losing time to second and third right now. Here they come on screen. If, and I'm going to throw this out there, if we get two more cautions in this race, we might see that five machine back up in this. Very well. Oh, boy. And didn't you say, Tommy, strategy... Oh, oh, what's going on here? Armor went to, he stopped right before he went in the intersection. Mass the gas and lost control. I don't know if he saw someone coming at him. I think he's, un, he's all out of control still. Drifting. And Tunney, Ben Tunney. Woo. <laughs> He's on a mad dash, Jeffrey. He's, he's got to be running some of the fastest laps oh, in the oh, race. Oh, I guarantee you. Caution flag. There's one of them. It is the Terminator. Well, John he's, Connor. He's been there for a while. Yeah, I know, but I think been. I think that was a while too much. Now, if you're one of the leaders, do you pit? Mark Tunney won this race last year by coming into the pits with 15 minutes to go. Shackleford pits in the 28. You're taking a 14 chance. 14 laps down, but hey, maybe get some fresh rubber. Let's take a look. Here's pit entrance to the right of your screen. On my screen, there you go. 
No takers. No takers so far. Personally, Jesse Tenney coming in, but he's probably going to make some adjustments. If, if it's me out there, I assume you're going to lose at least two laps. I'm not coming in. Ha. Not, not this close to the end. Yeah. But didn't you say that that pit happened with 15 minutes? Yeah, but Mark Tenney won this race again. Let me restate. 15 minutes left. Won it. Headed into the pits by having fresh tires. 15 minutes left. I know we're just shy of 30 minutes remaining. We're at 26.52. So how, how many minutes were left? 15. There's 15 I, I, when Mark pulled in. I don't, I don't know laps, how he did it either. How many laps did he lose? None? None yet? No. I have no idea, actually. Interesting. That's too far back to remember. Shagelford returns to the racetrack. But I love, I love it when strategy comes into play for these races. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously. No takers. Nobody going into the pits. Everyone's staying on track. They're committed. But you know who's really committed? Ben Tunney. Oh, yeah. 174 laps in. Green flag. Lap traffic scattered throughout this lead pack. Riddle in the middle between second and third. Oh! There's some contact in the back with Armour and Ben Tunney. Jeremy, Ben Tunney has another shot to he get does. another lead lap back. Now he has two lap. he's two laps down. I should say another lap back. He needs to get past your leaders again if he's going to have any shot at one lap down. Now, I feel like if he gets one lap down, we can start talking about Ben Tunney maybe having Correct. something in this You're race. right. However, Harmon is like, uh-uh. But Tunney's already passed half the field since the restart, so <laughs> take that as you will. With how dominant the seven machine has been at the beginning of this race, Jeremy, do you think he's holding back? Do you think the six has something to beat him? What do you think right now? I, I feel like the seven knows what he has. That car's been good this whole race. Harmon was better there, but I, I do wonder if Tunney was just like, well, I'll just keep a, I'll keep a distance here. I'll keep it with it, because they never lost touch. Never did. Never lost never did. touch with Harmon. Harmon did not pull away. But if you give up the lead, you allow someone else to control the race. It's a risk, but if you have enough hope and, you know, think your car can do it. Confidence is key in figure racing too. You gotta have enough confidence to get through that crossover. You gotta have enough confidence in what you have with your race car underneath you with 24 minutes left to go. Back on track, the 3D machine of Durham. You never give up in endurance racing. How about that? That is a lot of work and a long amount of time. But like you said, Jeffrey, not giving up. Steve Durham is 21st, 134 laps down. But he's going to finish this race. At least he's set to. Oh, around goes the 10 machine of armor. He's getting to know a lot of these drivers tonight. <laughs> he's been the wild child lately. Well, he had help on that one. Will we see a yellow? Will we see a yellow? If that does happen. Oh, boy. Ben Tunney still charging through the field. Trying to get to where he can be one lap down. Now, there's one driver we haven't talked a lot about, but we have four cars on the lead lap. The 17 machine of Corey Harmon, he's still in this fourth place right now. That's two Harmons. It's, it's Harmons versus Tunney's right now. Yeah, it is. Through the top four. We have nobody one lap down. We, okay, I don't know what the hell just happened there. 
but I, I was certain that we were just going to lose two cars in the intersection. Armour came across oddly into the flow of traffic. Sometimes you go to the right or the left, but it was like he went closer to the car that was coming through. Made it, made it work, and then locked him up. Yeah, maybe we should have put a camera on Armour's car. Yeah. Next time. Wild child. Intersection shot. See the field coming through. Closing in on 20 minutes left. Ben Tunney got held up. At this point, it's looking like he's gonna really struggle to even get that lap. One of the, those laps back. And I'm just calling it like it is because you watch him somehow make up this time and prove us wrong, and I'll I'll say, damn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but still, it was surprising to see. It, I don't think Tunney was really preserving the car, Tommy, because you don't no. come in to change. Oh, oh, through the intersection. Boy. We're fine. What were you saying? <laughs> I don't remember. Something about something. You're talking about preserving the car. And uh, yeah, I just think that, I don't know. Well said. Harmon and Austin Tunney have the car that the Pita looks like. And they're not, they don't seem to be preserving nothing in this race. They're racing this endurance race as if it's a 25, 30, 50, or even a 75 lapper. There's some hard racing right now. We talked about Ben Tunney. He's racing real hard with Sizemore. Both those cars multiple laps down. Sizemore happens to be seven laps down. And it's funny because Sizemore is racing hard because he's trying to chase down the G4 because they're on the same lap of Garrigus. You ever look at the screen Armor right Man. now? Top four. Yeah. Harmon in the 17. That's Corey Harmon at risk of going you, one lap down. You think Chris is going to cut Corey a break? Heck no. Why? Because if there's another caution, that's one of the drivers he's got to be. Ah. Yeah, screw him. <laughs> we have one of our onboard cameras on that 17 machine. Corey Harvin right now fighting for his chance to win this race. Trying to stay on the lead lap and hold off Chris in the six. Sideways. And this is helping Austin Tunney right now closing in. Chris doesn't want to see this. We talked about a similar scenario earlier where Tunney was being held up by a Tunney. Now Harmon's being held up by Harmon. Oh, the race is on up front. Here comes Austin Tunney. But now Austin's got to deal with Corey. And firm. Gonna have to deal with him. What is it about these long distance races that as we close into the finish? It's like an accordion. Everything starts to come back together. He, it's, I guess it's also like a yo-yo. You're throwing away, and it comes right back at you. Johnny's not being held out by this lap traffic, though. No surprise. Harmon racing him hard. Harmon's going to race everyone hard right now. Now, Harmon is still in fourth. The only car one lap down. Only car. On his own lap. And if this race goes the distance in the green, likely will finish there. Another wall of lap traffic ahead of your leader, Chris Harmon. Those are two good cars. Durham might not put up too much of a fight here. Oh, watch out for the tip. I'm surprised that hasn't got anyone yet. We usually see someone get rear-ended at some point. So far, not tonight. But the wit continues. Yeah, we, 
We started with 27 cars on the racetrack. What's the number we're at now? As Harmon goes through more lap traffic. 15, we've lost 12. Still more than half. Oh yeah. Three wide. I tell you what, man. You wouldn't know that most of these cars are multiple laps down. Oh, definitely. But that's not the point. Oh, bitch, honey. Growing tired of Corey Harmon right now. Why do you think so many people pack into these stands? It's not because these drivers just lay over once they fall two laps down. The 91 machine is seven laps down. I think Tunney has lost his patience with Harmon right now. Ben Tunney trying to get well, through. And Tunney and Sizemore have been racing this whole stretch of time. Oh, doggy. Up front, there's just one car separating the leaders. Austin Tunney is one and a half seconds behind the six of Chris Harmon. 16 minutes to go. And I gotta give props to this guy in the sand. Hang on. You'll see him here in a second. This dude has been standing since the first lap. Well, he got his beer. He's got it. The, the longer he stands, the more the beer goes flowing from top to bottom. <laughs> and I'd be, on the, I'd be on my feet too, but that's kind of because we have to be. You just saw a huge move by the seven machine, working his way past multiple cars. Ed has opened up the door. There's one car in front of him that he sees, and it is the leader, Chris Harmon. Oh, man. Your leaders are going to have to deal with some intersection traffic here in a moment, as well as lap traffic. Is it go time? How will this be? Lap traffic always comes into play in these races. It's a small track. You have to make it through. You got to make it to the finish. But you can't wait for anybody to woe you down. Here comes the seven machine. Harmon goes high. Austin Tunney looking low. The battle for the lead. Austin Tunney takes it for the moment. He splits the lap traffic. Harmon getting held up. Austin Tunney takes the lead with 14 and a half minutes to go. Fans on their feet. Seeing how this one's going to play out. All this jostling is pulling Mark Tunney into the mix. Tunney is closed in to within. Whoa! That was close. Yeah, Two and a half seconds of your leaders. Tunney didn't, Mark Tunney didn't know what to do there. Harmon is still all over the rear bumper of Tunney. Tunney getting held up! Tunney has contact! It's not slowing anybody down. We saw it in the three hour where Tunney got caught up coming into the intersection, climbed over another car, and then later in the race, got nailed, hard contact at the intersection. Having flashbacks? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> oh, boy, folks. If you're on your couch right now, don't. if you got to go pee, just hold Caution it. Caution flag is in the air. Hold you so. 13 minutes Woo. and 23 seconds. All of right. Racing left to go. All right, I'm watching the pits. How do you think? Any taker. <laughs> this lines up almost perfectly to the uh, Jeffrey. <laughs> I mean, tell me who's on the lead lap. Three cars. Three cars. Austin Tunney, the seven. The six H of Chris Harmon. The now, three T of Mark Tunney. Now Wait a here's, minute. Mark here's Tunney. why I've locked in the camera to the pit entrance is because if you're Austin Tunney, and you decide, I'm here for track position, and you stay out, Harmon and Mark Tunney are peeling it. If they can get a stop down in time, but no takers, no takers. 
I, I'm not surprised though. I'm I, not surprised. I think with 12 minutes, eh. I I feel I feel honestly like each of those drivers in the lead lap, who are just about all restarting together, yeah, feel like uh, I I could beat them. I could beat this guy. There should not be, according to what I see right now, there should not be any lap traffic between your top three when we go back to racing next time. Bye. It was Murphy in the 80 that had the contact with the seven of Tunney. He continues on. 11 minutes, 55 seconds left to go. I get the impression we're getting ready to restart, but we don't look organized, do we? Light, yellow light is on. They're waving it off. Waving it up, waving it up, boys. Oh, Wave it, look out, whoa, boy. 99, hold it up. All right, nobody made contact, that's good. Corey Harmon coming back on track. Wait a minute, he's coming back on track? Yeah, he peeled off, I, he pitted before we saw him pulling off. Are you telling me that the 17 who's one lap down has fresh tires? Sure does. Ladies and gentlemen, 11 minutes to go. These drivers are ready to go, man. Flagman wants them in all order first. Uh, huh. What I'm curious about is... Oh, look out. And now we are hitting each other. Shackleford into Durham. Look like Armour was in the Murphy. Oh my goodness. Don't tell me we're going to wreck cars out under yellow. <laughs> Even under yellow, it's not safe. Woo. Incredible night of racing we have it's, here. It's getting so intense. Even Nate now is what, standing up now. Look at that. He's Man, he's ready to go. Now, what's the <laughs> rule with 10 minutes to go in these, Tommy? In regards to counting rules. time. There are no rules. Do we just keep counting time? I forget. I believe so, yeah. Okay, I thought we stopped the clock at 10, but maybe I'm... Well, we're going to restart here with a little over 10. Here we go. And Tony does not get a good start. Because we're not going green. Because we're not going green. Oh, man. But still, he didn't get a good continuous. <laughs> Somebody <process>. was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been the wildest caution of the night. The clock is still running, so. I guess, I guess that's our answer. What do you think? Restart this uh, time. Great flag. Sure. Your top three are all on top of each other. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the end of the 90 minute spring shootout at Indianapolis Pedro. Tunney leads, but he gets the bumper. Here comes Mark Tunney to the inside. We know that if Mark Tunney gets up there to second, he's not gonna give Austin Tunney a break. Don't look now. But Ben Tunney's looking to get a lot back. And he's going to have to do whatever he can to get through because cautions help him. Probably right. too little too late for that team. Side by side for a second, but they're not losing time to Austin Tunney. We will have a pack that's getting split up right now from your main pack. We are going to have a mess for the leaders to go through in about two laps. I mean a mess. Top, they're, they're three wide right now. Top three on the screen. And you see them coming. Next time by, hold on to your hats. Buckle up into those couches. Here comes the intersection. Who's going to risk it the most? Who wants it the most with eight and a half minutes to go? And Harmon, Harmon can't lift. He makes it through, but lost time to Tunney. Unbelievable. Oh, boy. Mark, Tunney, Jeffrey, in the 3T, getting oh, trouble back. Oh, trouble! Harmon does the six machine off the pace. Chris Harmon, it looks like he's done. There's fire under the hood. Stuck in the intersection, the yellow flag comes out. What a heartbreaker for Harmon, Tommy. Backfiring up through the carburetor. Harmon slams his hands on the steering wheel. Unbelievable. Dead. They're telling him to push it into the pits, trying to get something going. 
Man, oh man, you saw the fire. So close. Coming up through the carburetor like it stalled out or something. Rolling up to him is Tunney. And they're just having a conversation. Tunney's going to push him in. 230 laps. And, and a standing ovation by this guy. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else is clapping. Tommy. Look at that you gotta, beard. You got to respect the run. Look at that beard. Oh, wait. Like I was saying, you got to respect the run by this number <laughs> six machine. We saw him. He was fast in Florida. I think Sizemore is going to end up winning this race. Seven laps down. You think so? Can't believe it, man. Heartbreak. Heartbreak for us, the viewers, It was too. within seven minutes of contending for this win. Man. Well, we're down to two Tunnies now. Then there were two. What the heck's Ben Tunney doing? <laughs> Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> he either is really pissed off or really excited. <laughs> Did he get the lucky dog, you think? I don't know if there is one. I, I feel like if he got the lucky dog, he'd be taking more care of whatever he's doing. <laughs> well, he restarts in the back. He will be third. The way they're running right now, the Tunnies can sweep the top three. So, All right, so I, I should ask you, because you do have, oh, you know what, I can see it. Yes. Harmon and Ben Tunney, they're still a lap apart, correct? Corey Harmon is four laps down. Oh, never mind. Never ben mind. Ben Tunney, I'm, I'm showing three laps down. Green flag, five minutes to go, and they did stop the clock, by the way. Now it's a showdown. How about Sizemore? Now he's just showing off. He's he should. He has such a good car. Back on track, the number six machine, it is Harmon. He is backfiring like crazy, though. Something's wrong with that car. Harmon, five laps down. And not the restart Mark Tunney need, needed no. if he was going to take this one. Not at all. Off the Tunney into turn number one. Here comes the rest of the field. Mark Tunney's falling back, Tommy. Big yeah, time. Is. Trouble for the three-T machine. Now he's getting hit. Something is wrong with Mark Tunney. And look at the two fresh tires charging through. Harmon and Ben Tunney. If there's a problem with that three team machine. Looks like it. Yeah, he's going wide. Unbelievable. Crazy how the race can change so much in 90 minutes. Oh, are you kidding? In two minutes, we've lost the top three, yeah. two of the top three cars. Now might not be, oh boy, now might not be the best time to bring it up. But don't forget, talk about risking it. That seventh machine of Austin Tunney, who's still threading the needle, had contact with his right front. Sure did. Got lucky that that tire stuck with him. Logan, the 99's having issues, the six of Harmon, and it is stacking up the intersection right now. To give perspective of what happened here, Mark Tunney, Mark Tunney is gonna be lapped before this race is over. At the pace he's at right now, that's a definite. But I'll throw this into the mix. Austin Tunney might be thinking he's in pretty good shape. There's a car. No, never mind. He's lapped down. I, I was going back to the 17 of Harmon, but I forgot he's lost a couple yeah. laps. But he's coming. That 17 machine, man. Well, he's on the freshest tires. 
sitting in the four spot right now. He is three laps down to correct myself. If he were to get a lap back, Tommy Mark Tunney, one lap down. I didn't even see him get lapped. It happened so fast. Yeah, it happened that fast. I saw it, but crazy. Crazy how we've got one car in the lead lap. And you know what? I'm going to say it. The, the results aren't going to show no. how phenomenal the race this was. All of you viewers tuning in with us here. And it's not done. No. We are not, not handing over the trophy yet. But you have all have seen how this story is playing out. A lot of twists, a lot of turns, a lot of crossing through. Well, that's what we do here at the Speed Drum with Fig Great Racing. Austin Tunney almost gets nailed in the intersection. Harmon. You know, Harmon's like, hey, I'll still race you. Heck yeah. Again. He's oh. racing pissed off now. Oh, my goodness. A minute and 15 seconds to go. Here comes Harmon. He wants one of his laps back. If he gets a caution, he might be able to catch Tunney. Tunney's looking for a lap back. By my recollection, which may be wrong, if Tunney gets a lap back. Mark Tunney going two laps down now. Unbelievable. Which means actually, Tommy, that's a battle for position. Ben Tunney is passing Mark Tunney in the last 45 seconds for the second spot. And a car around in Shackleford. This could change a lot in the top three. He is trying. He's trying to get it fired up. He's Creeping gone. It. He's got it. Stuck on the track, Murphy. Right in front of your leader. 24 seconds left in this incredible 90-minute spectacular. It ain't over. And it ain't over. It's not over till the checkered flag falls. There's a lot of tunnies in one spot right now. Four seconds to end the time portion of this race. The clock hits zero. The fans are getting on their feet. And the checkered flag flies for your winner in the spring shootout. The number seven machine of Austin Tunney. Second place, Ben Tunney. Mark Tunney holds on for third. Corey Harmon fourth. Mike Riddle Jr. finishes in the top five. Chad Sizemore, after his entire day, comes home sixth. So many storylines, Jeffrey. In 90 minutes, you could have written a book on this race. Like I said, the results won't. If you look at it, you're going to see that second place finished two laps down. With what, 15 minutes to go? We had three cars on the lead lap. So much can change in such and, a small portion of time. And two you're, minutes. Out of, you're out of voice. You're done. I'm done. They're just going to give the win to Sizemore. If he wants to do donuts. Well, he should celebrate. Absolutely. He lost a piece of rubber. Crew coming to celebrate. Getting the checkered flag, Tommy. Well, Austin Tunney. That seven machine. You know what? He held nothing back from the beginning of this race. Yeah, absolutely. 251 laps completed. If you had told me 15 laps into this race that Austin Tunney was going to win, yeah. I'd say, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely he he made good. it look easy. Though we all saw how this race was going. None of it was easy for anybody, including your winner. Sometimes luck's on your side, sometimes skill is what you need, and this driver had it all. You'd rather, Austin Tunney. You'd rather be lucky than good. Tonight, Austin Tunney was both. Had that contact with the right front, easily could have ended his race. Not tonight. I don't think there's gonna be much of that motor left. Oh, he don't need it. 
He just won 10 grand, man. He looks yeah. pretty happy to win. I, I'd say he's okay. Well, we're gonna send it downstairs for the Victory Lane interview with Austin Tunney. He said, can't say it on a microphone, but he said, I told you. Family, crew, junior princess, wife, 251 laps. I'm gonna put it up there. Stan, my man, I know you need a cigarette. <laughs> now, just need my breath right now and a little cooling. Uh, the overheated, man, I ran my ass off. I just kept saving, saving, saving. Knew, knew that they were gonna start falling off. I just kept on being easy on the throttle. Being easy on the throttle, it's hard sometimes. You get two guys to get around you. You just wanna get it down, hammer down and try to get back around them. Just stayed easy, we had 30 minutes left to go when I got around. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited for everybody on my crew who worked our ass off for this. Uh, I, can't, I appreciate everyone, thank you. Uh, let's thank the sponsors, uh, let's thank the wife. I think the wife's actually got a, a pen for you to sign the check. Yeah, I'm sure she does, but that's probably my father-in-law's. I can't thank him enough. You got to attend high gear. Uh, it's uh, This is crazy. I got to thank my father-in-law. Uh, he he's funded this whole deal. We had some help, though, with it. He's the one who got us started big time uh, with this car again. My, like I said, begin, at the beginning of the year, I got my baby back. and This shows it right here. I love this car. Can't thank Audi Moose enough for building an awesome fucking car. Sorry, excuse my language. An awesome freaking car. Uh, I can't thank uh, THM Roofing. I walk on this way. THM Roofing, United Auto Parts, uh, Dave Kenny Mowing, Jimmy Curry, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Curry, Mojo, uh, Tire Innovation, BNR Speed Shop. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to catch my breath and not forget anyone. Oh, we got THM Roofing. That's my father in law. Can't thank him enough. Uh, my girlfriend. Uh, Jimmy Curry, I want to say, everyone, please still say a prayer for his mother. Uh, she's in the hospital right now, fighting, uh, hoping she's doing better. And my wife, I apologize, I need to thank my wife, not my girlfriend, almost of a year now. Uh, also, my, all my crew and everyone else, I'll give the mic back, anyone I'm forgetting. I really appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you, guys. Well, now we're here in Victory Circle. We got a big, big paycheck for you right here, $10,000. Pay for view, hold it up, show them. This is you, buddy. $10,000. Let's hear it once again for Austin Tunney. Hey, Austin, we got something for you to maybe at breakfast and uh, maybe with a cold beer or whatever you want your choice. This is Jack's Donuts all the way from Newcastle, 1961. There's your don a dozen donuts of your choice, his choice, whatever. Enjoy them. Congratulations, Austin Tunney crew, Audie Moose, Mom, everybody. You too, sir. Congratulations for Austin Tunney, your 2018 90-minute champion. Take the cash and catch it. Cash and cash it. Boy. That's what I'm going to do with all my well, cash. Well, I just want to go on record here for stats. Scott and I is a statistician here at the Indianapolis Speed Drum, uh -huh. but you and I can take on that job for the low-budget TV broadcasting. We've had three different winners at the Speed Drum yeah. of our broadcast. Since we've been here. Since we've been here. Uh -huh. We've had two... F-bombs. Yeah, yeah, two in a row. Two in a row. Yeah, we're doing pretty good on that one. So, <laughs> hey, it's a stat, right? <laughs> Austin Tunney, I love how he apologized. Like, he was like, oh, crap. Uh, but this is our first time, the one first win we've seen Austin Tunney get at the Speed Drum. We've seen him win at the Orange Show Speedway. Yes. He's the only other driver other than Ben Tunney 
to win the 300 lap at Orange Joe Speedway. So second win on Low Budget TV. First time here at the Speed Dome. Two F-bombs, three different winners. <laughs> and we'll be back here for the fourth broadcast here in September oh, don't, for the three-hour endurance. Do not miss it. Don't it, miss it. It's, we, talk, here. we talk about what an incredible night tonight was. Yeah. That is, like, if you literally, if you want to put a comparison to it, for figure eight racers, it's the Daytona 500. Yes. It's the Indy 500. Take that Indianapolis, whatever. Yeah, that little amateur hour Indianapolis, take that Indianapolis raceway. <laughs> uh, no. You got it wrong again. But yeah. anyways, I know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, Tommy, you talk about that race. Uh-huh. It, it's just incredible. This race, though. Uh, you could see how much it means to that seven oh, driver, yeah. how much it means to Austin to get that win and and bring it home and, and kind of show everybody, look, you know what? We justified it. All the hard work we put into this car, you could hear how excited he is to be back in this car. And it, it all came together. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so huge props to the seven. You know, going back on the storylines, we thought the five machine was a shoe in for at least – you know, somebody that we'd be talking about on the podium. And then halfway through this race, we didn't think he'd finish in the top ten. Absolutely. Brings it back to finish second in the race. Mm -hmm. Not too surprised there, but still surprised to see the issues that that driver, that Ben, suffered with throughout this yeah. race. Uh, it, it just looked like they missed the setup at the beginning. And may, you never know, something might have broke. Mm -hmm. Something uh, something that may, may have been able to fix pretty easily in the pits when we saw him come in. Or something else. Maybe just... Overdid it with strategy. Could have been. Maybe he backed up too much and got a lap down. Someone's on Discord soon. right now. By the Someone way. is. I'm just letting you know. Well, Jeffrey, you see the big check. You see the really tall trophy. There and you, you see the winner down below. Trust me when I say this. It's a huge expense to get here. We do it because we love it. Yeah. We do it because we love all of you. And we have a lot of fun doing this. And thank you all for joining us, tuning in. We can't wait to see you at the next figure eight event at the three-hour endurance race here from Indianapolis Speed Room. And you know what? I'll throw this out there, too, if you enjoyed the coverage. Tom and I, we don't just do figure eight racing. We do a lot Correct. of dirt track oh, coverage. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of short track asphalt racing coverage. We'll be right at it again next week in Irwindale Speedway. A whole lot of demolition derby stuff, a whole lot of who knows what. But you can check it all out. Facebook, Low Budget TV. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit like on the uh, Low Budget TV Facebook page, as well as our YouTube page, Low Budget TV there. Tommy, that's a wrap here at the Indianapolis Speedrome. All we can really say is Austin Tunney's car is really effing awesome. <laughs> Straight from the driver himself. That's right. Thank you to Nate for helping produce this thing at Bad Fast and Full Pull and all the other broadcasting he does. Uh, thank you to Joe for running through the pits, helping us out, getting all the wireless camera action. And again, thank you all for joining us here from the Speedrome, Chris at home base and everybody involved. You all know who you are and it's all the ones tuning in here to watch. Folks, that's it. That's a wrap from the Speedrome. We're Low Budget TV and we'll see you at the races. Good night, everybody.